Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you here from Westlake Village, California. I want to jump into the charts real quick. We're going to talk about Bitcoin price action. We'll take a look at Ethereum, NASDAQ, Dixie, talk about the monthly closure, maybe talk about the moons. So if you enjoyed some of that, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. All right, jumping into the charts. First thing I'm looking at is Bitcoin had um, made an attempt to recover this candle right here. When I say recover, uh, well, in fact, it did. It did go up and fill all the price action in from that high volume candle. Coming back, uh, well, it wasn't super high volume, but there was definitely a change in market right there. And then we have this one. So yeah, no, no major volume candles back there, but uh, just looking uh, kind of what we said yesterday, we needed to reclaim the green box of peace and prosperity and death and despair at 27,550. If we could not, um, we did say, hey, look, liquidity was hanging out there, likely to go up there and swipe that 27,550. In fact, we got that swipe and I wish I could say I traded it perfectly, but I did not. <laughs> um, what else I want to talk about? So this is the 15 minute time frame. looking at the daily uh, by ticking below uh, yesterday's low, we should get a run back down to the nine exponential right there. Um, checking out the uh, charts here today. Um, no major gainers. Tommy down five and a quarter or 5.3%. Uh, Ox down 6%. Say down and GMX down. So some of the big players taking a hit today. I'd imagine Tether Dominance is starting to tick up here. And when Tether Dominance goes up, right, what are people doing? They are, well, selling their coins and turning them in for cash. Tether, supposedly cash, right? Um, and just following kind of overall, look, it's the opposite chart of Bitcoin on the daily. Uh, the exact opposite chart, if you want to take a look there. So... Essentially, as long as we were above this pivot, I mean, we could come tag the middle of this all the way down if we if we really make a run down. But as long as we were above there, you know, technically looking for uh, um, just a higher low on the daily, that would look that would look nice. Um, but um, we are coming upon the, the monthly closure and the monthly getting a tag on the trend line. Hard to say, hard to say. Um, supposedly, the theory is if you close below the 21, bad, above it, good. So we'd have to recover here uh, back above 27,550. Um, what happened today? The economic news that came out. We had jobless claims. Jobless claims, and by the way, apparently China is trying to bolster their economy, lowering rates and giving first-time or second-time home buyers special, uh, special, <laughs> special rights. Uh, so probably injecting some liquidity in there as well. Let's just take a look at that really quick. So while I'm pulling that up, I'll just tell you jobless claims came out lower than expected, which is more on the bullish side for the dollar. And after that news did come out, you saw prices pull back, dollar came up, and what else am I seeing here? By any far stretch of the imagination, we are bouncing off the purple 200, and as long as we're above there on the 15 minute good for Bitcoin, below there bad, below the green 55 bad, taking out that wick at 26,965, probably gonna get a run down to your next target, which is the purple 200. You can see the range is gonna be this week and this week. That's where the stops are gonna be hanging out and above or below there, probably gonna get a run uh, back to the high at 28, 28.8. And then if we get a you know closure below 26.7, uh, sorry, 26.976, gonna run back down. So keeping an eye on Dixie today, uh, the bias buster, if it reclaims the purple 200 or specifically this level at 103.70, then um, calling it a bit of a bear trap, gonna run back to the highs and that would be uh, bearish for the risk assets. You know, NASDAQ still looking strong guys, uh, still curling up here at the top side of the range. Momentum did just flip down on the hourly. Let's see what the four hours doing. 
putting a bit of an indecision candle in and uh, really needs to close above that level right there. If it wants to continue onwards and upwards, I would say a four hour back above this level gonna get the, you know, probably the next leg up. And might go for that gap fill up at uh, 15,807. The other thing to consider is what the bond market is doing as the bond market is gonna be auctioning off some of the 30 year mortgages at seven and a quarter percent coming in hot there. So personal spending was up 0.8%, personal income down. Uh, initial jobless claims were down and um, continuing jobless claims were up. So kind of a mixed bag there, but apparently the market is interpreting it as bullish for the dollar and uh, that puts pressure on the risk assets. You can see Dixie is popping up here and on the weekly time frame. Uh, looking like a pretty bearish candle to me, uh, but we haven't finished the week yet. Two day, four day. Uh, momentum is still to the upside. So again, uh, getting above that critical pivot of 103.70 on the, is it the daily? I think it, we said the four hour time frame is going, you know, if we see a break above there and a higher low, that would look good. For continuation on the dollar. Otherwise, I am expecting a bit of a pressure here and a test of this trend line uh, before continuation. Okay, and that is exactly where you'd expect that kind of lower high to come in. What else is on the board here? Uh, we said we're going to check in on the bond market really quick. Just looking at some of the big stocks. It looks like a mostly green day so far. Some of the red stocks down, what the heck? FRC, First Republic. I think this is probably closed for trading. Uh, BOFA down. Some of the banking stocks coming under pressure. Uh, just watch that movie, The, the Big Short, again uh, over the past two days. Pretty, pretty interesting to see what corrupt bankers and politicians were doing during the great financial crisis uh, to get us, you know, where we're at today with all the inflation and the bailout money. Uh, next thing, uh, the 10 year, which we did say was going to uh, tap the target uh, 5.22. And we had that target from way back here, kind of denoting the, uh, the macro breakout, higher highs, higher lows on the weekly time frame. So where does she go from now? Uh, probably, you know, pull back, I guess. Um, so that would be a good point for the bulls there. The 10 year down uh, pretty good on the hourly, on the daily. I think the 10 year probably has a bit more to go. And the 30 year also coming down. So bond market coming down. That's a point for the bulls. For the bulls out there, wherever you are. What else do I want to bring to our attention for today before I get into the end of our analysis? Uh, I think we said we're going to talk about Ethereum and let's check out ETH Bitcoin up a half a percent today. Did break the falling channel to the downside big wick up back in, reclaim the range and now getting rejected. So is the, is the measure move intact? I'd say wait for the weekly to break it and, um, you know, altcoins to suffer if uh, this comes down alongside Bitcoin dominance, which is ticking up right now, perhaps. Bit of a change in structure there uh, for the weekly time frame. So interesting uh, to see if we can, you know, hold the Bitcoin dominance chart up. Um, Cardano down 1% for the day. Bouncing off the lows. Don't want to lose this region here. Otherwise, it is probably, you know, yeah, next overall target on this one down 20 cents. Uh, stacks. Okay, Ethereum. And by the way, all the major time frames, everybody's talking about it on the weekly, has the potential for some hidden bullish divergence, which would be confirmed. 
I guess closing above the 21 is the uh, area, 1780. Uh, got a lot of work to go on that one. Oh, do I want to pull that profit down a little bit more? I think I do. I think I do. Why? Where's all the liquidity on Ethereum hanging out? It's at about 1685 or even call it 1697, 1698. Could we get a flash wick down there right now? Well, we'll take a look on the 15 minute time frame and just see what we're seeing. Pressure to the downside on the 15 minute. And uh, yeah, if we close back below this candle, that'll look good for a move down to that 1700 mark. Um, probably going to bounce it one more time off the purple 200. And uh, I think that's it out of me today, guys. Um, otherwise, if we do start closing any kind of a really even a hourly back below 1691, I do think they're going to make a run for all the liquidity. And what I'm talking about, and I got a lot of questions on this yesterday, is the liquidation chart. Um, essentially, these bubbles or these big red candles on the side is where the longs are going to get liquidated. And here's where the shorts are going to get liquidated. You can see the delta is roughly, uh, I think we're looking at about $3 billion, which is not $2.2 uh, So net long. Wouldn't take much for them to push it down to that 1692, if you ask me. Um, but the dollar is failing to reclaim the purple 200 on the hourly, so uh, hope for the hope for the bulls out there. So far, so good. But um, yeah, back above this level at 1730, probably going to run, you know, back to the highs and then judge it from there. Otherwise, it looks like, um, you know, short term trap action um, for both sides of the coin as this wick is trapping the longs there. And well, this wick, the, the, uh, the shorts were getting trapped. So who are they going to go for next? My guess would be uh, these guys down here. But I could be wrong and we could be getting a nice bounce right off the green 55 on the 15 minute time frame with declining volatility. So mean reversion bounce, uh, likely, you know, uh, but, you know, below 1711, that bounce um, is just another lower high. And um, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, last thing I want to bring up is the Fed rate hike tool, which did uh, go in favor of the bulls saying 88% chance of no rate hike uh, coming in September. Everybody's talking about, you know, September being the bloodiest month historically for crypto. Well, I don't always fly by those, you know, oh, just because all the months are red, uh, it's just going to be red. We want to, you know, get some markers on the charts and start to identify them. I hope you enjoyed some of the stream today, guys. Have yourself a blessed and highly favored day. I will be back tomorrow. Take care.